Okay, here we go. Okay, so I thought I'll just start off as with, hey, Mr. Sherman. No, no, why don't you start off? Since it's your podcast. Well, it's our crazy podcast. Asians. Sensation. No, crazy <laughs> Asian sensations. No, it's just called the Asian sensations. The Take Asian the crazy sensations. <laughs> <laughs> I can't stop without the crazies. Okay, the Asian sensations. Are you looking to be a sales associate at? Uh, no, I uh, someone contacted me. I was like, "What are you guys looking for? Somebody in Houston? Let me oh. know." So I'm gonna forward it on to people that come in here that are like, "Hey, you know, I need like salary job people." Oh, smart. Good to know. There you go. Good That's because um. So Jessica Crabtree connected with the <laughs> LinkedIn, <laughs> and I said, "So she's from Phoenix." I said, "Hi, nice to meet you. Um, are you looking for something in Houston?" And uh, so she's a recruiter. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. All right. <clears throat> what is our topic on? Work-life balance. Work-life balance, yeah. Are we still doing... I guess we can just set it the way we always do. You can say... You can tee up the... The first, here is a word from our sponsor. That yes. That doesn't exist. Yes. yes. <laughs> just not, yet. Not yet. Just yet. But we're building it like... Um, if you saw, saw the movie uh, Filled with Dreams, if you build it, they will come. Huh. Right? All so right. if you always have a spot for sponsors, they, <laughs> they will, will let come. you come. And they will put the Martin Man in there. <laughs> Did you record the one for the Rock the Boat one? No, I need to. Oh. Because I, I just saw when I was driving in. What that is wasn't it? appropriate. Is it a... Uh... Um, it's literally a podcast of Asian Americans where we're going to be interviewing different people. On. Oh. One of okay. Coming up, I think it's... Oh, I thought it was like an app. Oh, no. That was like a dating app. Yeah. Oh, it was just in the, for another podcast. So I'm just pipping out another podcast. Oh, like, that's, that's interesting. Cool. Yeah. That's interesting that they would do that. Yeah, and they're paying me money for it. I'll yeah. Say, I will gladly take your money. <laughs> okay. Rock the boat. What am I saying? Well, I'll say this is Sherman the Crazy Asian and, and then... Okay, cool. And then, and I'll, I guess I'll just be like, but first, away from our sponsor. Whoever finishes last, that's what we're going to yeah. do. But you're going to introduce yourself and the, um, the Asian sensations. Yes. The Asian could you, sensations. Could you always call it the crazy Asian yeah. sensations. <laughs> and that is way more of a mouthful than the Asian sensations. Yes, it is. <laughs> All right. Hello, it's Sherman, the crazy Asian. And this is Megan, and welcome back to the crazy Asians. Oh. <laughs> Dang it! <laughs> I thought it was such confidence. Yeah, see, it's on video now. <sighs> Take two. All right. This is why you have the video. It's fun to watch. <laughs> <laughs> Did you watch the other one when we first recorded? I haven't rewatched it, but it's it'll be it's good like one. super long. It was it? when I uploaded onto YouTube. Like... I was like, "Holy thing, this thing took forever to load." <laughs> I don't know how much space I'm taking up on YouTube, but it is a lot. Oh, good. All right. Hello, it's Sherman, the crazy Asian, and this is Megan, and welcome back to the Asian Sensations podcast. Today's topic is going to be on work-life balance, but before we get into that, let's hear a word from our sponsor. Great. That's good. Intro. Where's my tip? Okay. Yeah, no, it's good to name the episode. I had a sponsored segment. After that. Okay. Let's go. Do you need to get it? Yeah. I'll start. Okay, go. All right, Megan. So you and I, we've talked about work-life balance, and we thought that this made a lot of sense since both you and I have had some time from some vacation off. So first, we both won a sales contest. Yep. Or, or you know, work contest. So we work were able contest. to go to um, Lake Charles. Yes. I was going to call it St. Charles because I've been playing <laughs> Monopoly a while. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so you and I were able to go there for a long weekend. Mm -hmm. And then also, I know you took some, some time off and you also then booked something in Puerto Rico. Yeah. Typically, you love to book some time in Hawaii yes. to connect with your um, roots there. <laughs> The words that don't exist, but I think they exist. Yeah. So, and, then, and then I'm also coming off of a family vacation that was for a week in uh, Puerto Varta, Mexico. So we thought that it just kind of made sense that you and I would talk a little about that just because, number one, I think people need to understand that, you know, you, you literally work your face off. You hustle like crazy. Yep. Um, and you have some side gigs as well. So there's constant work happening, but then there's time for you able to decompress and relax. So why don't you for... Talk a little bit about work-life balance. What does that mean to you and how do you kind of go about it? I think it's super important to have work-life balance because of the fact that so many people 
work way too much. And I think that just causes like premature aging. You know, people have heart attacks. Like a lot of people have heart attacks when they're in their 30s or mm -hmm. they have strokes. And typically it's due to stress. Yes. You know, and so, and the number one stressor in most people's life is typically work related. Mm -hmm. um, because you're, and I think that's the one thing that I think is wrong in America is the fact that we emphasize so much on work. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you go to other countries and whatnot. That's, I mean, yes, work is important, but. I mean, is it, what is it like in Spain? They just take like siestas. <laughs> like, yes. I want to take a siesta. Yeah, you're um, more than welcome to. <laughs> <laughs> I'll crawl under my desk and sleep. Um, but I, I think that. it's, I have to. Uh, <laughs> but I think that's important to have work-life balance. Yes. Um, because it helps you, personally for me, when I take a break, you know, whether it's a long weekend or it is a full week, I typically, well, sometimes I do need a vacation from my vacation, but yeah. I think it just recharges you yes. and you're ready to get back to the grind and work your face off again. Yes. Um, and it's just, it's important, I think, for mental health to take a little breather, to take a break um, and recharge and understand that, you know, we don't live and breathe and die to work. Yes. You know, I think we live and breathe and die to enjoy life. Yep. And work's part of it. I mean, bills are bills, and some things in life require money. Yep. Um, and then that's what comes from work. And, I mean, you know, again, I think you can fulfill yourself through work as well. Mm -hmm. But I think everybody needs a break, regardless of what your job is. Yeah, so even if, um, you know, that, that old Confucius saying, um, if you love what you do, you'll never work a day of your life. Yep. It's still work, though. Like yeah. you and I love what we do. We love you know talking to people um, and, and helping them, but it's still work, right? We're still required to to come to an office and engage. And sometimes there is need to be able to pull the reins back, right? I can't be jumping up and down or screaming down the halls, even though I might want to. Yeah, and then I think also work life balance outside of you know personal time. I guess like from my perspective is it's being like a single young professional, you know, obviously all of my work-life balance is focused around like myself, mm -hmm. but work-life balance I think is also important for when you are married with children or just married or you're single and you have children, regardless, you know, that's part of life as well as mm -hmm. watching kids grow up or be a part of your significant others, you know, life as well mm -hmm. and building upon that relationship. So I just think it's important that people understand that it's okay to take vacations. I always find it funny when people tell me, well, like I've accrued as much vacation time as I can. And I'm like, you're a psycho. I never hit my accrual limit because I'm going to take a vacation. Yes. There's not a time that I'm not taking vacation. And you can see the difference in their behavior and their work habits in the sense of like, they're super stressed out all the time, but they're not taking vacation because they think they don't deserve to take their vacation mm -hmm. or they're so focused on their job. But I'm like, man, I think if you did take that vacation time, you'd be a lot better in your work ethic. You wouldn't yes. be burnt out. And that's something that I listened to on a different podcast the other day was like the reality of burnout. Like apparently burnout is now like a condition. Yeah. Um, You know, like it's, it's like sometimes deemed as like a, a mental condition or like a medical condition or something but burnout's real you know how many people literally they work 12s mm -hmm. 12 hour days five days a week or whatever it is and they're just burnt out they don't even want to do anything with their weekends because mm -hmm. they're so tired yeah and so what ends up happening is not necessarily work-life balance it's flexibility, right? Mm -hmm. It's understanding that you're going to have to give and take at certain moments of your career. Uh, it reminds me of there's a, the seven habits of highly effective people. He talks about the, the phrase of sharpening your saw. Mm -hmm. Where you do, you take a break. So it, it's this analogy where you have two people that are going to cut down a tree. Oh, and yeah. one person yeah, yeah. just goes right at it with the axe. The other person, before starting it, he sharpens his saw or his axe yep. uh, for like a half hour and then goes at it and then sharpens it after lunch. And goes at it and is able to actually cut down the the tree quicker 
and with less energy yep. than the person that just kept them going at it. And you're right. It, what happens is, is these people that are like, they almost wear it on, a, on, their, on their sleeve, right? The pride. I, I don't take any vacations. And what they find is that they are. They're totally stressed out and they're missing out on the opportunity to just enjoy the moment yeah. instead of living for these different deadlines at work. Yeah. And I don't know very many people that want to just work all of the time. You know, I think nowadays being a recruiter and really just the way that society has moved, work-life balance is super important. Mm -hmm. You know, before it used to be everybody would go in and it's like salary. Mm -hmm. What are you going to pay me? How much money am I going to make? And now it's what's the work-life balance? What's <laughs> Which kind of rolls into sometimes like team culture too. Mm -hmm. You know, like what's how's the environment? And I think that that plays hand in hand, you know, if people have great work-life balance, they're typically going to have a good work environment as mm -hmm. well. You know, there's not a bunch of stressed out people that are just, you know, their only fume is caffeine, you yes. know, or they're just, they're walking around with the IVs of coffee or something just to keep themselves yeah. alive. Um, and I think that more companies should embrace it, which I think a lot of people are now. Yes. Um, a lot of them are, if you're out on LinkedIn, there's always these CEOs writing these articles about, you know, I allow my employees to take time off, mm -hmm. you know, or I allow them to work from home if need be. And, you know, there's also articles about like working remote. Does it work? Does it not? Is it effective? Um, but I think that all plays into work-life balance. Mm -hmm. It totally does. And um, you know, you're right. I mean, I even was reading an article that talked about how more companies are coming over to paternity leave. So yep. that the father and the mother can be taking time off to take care of this newborn and embrace. And I've seen that there's a more uh, understanding uh, of the grieving period. When, when, you lose, when you lose a loved one, uh, there's not necessarily a, a time limit on it. And, and be, any, um, like there was in the past of, oh, you only get two days to grieve and mm -hmm. let's get you back to work. Um, and so I think it's important. One of the things I do hate, though, Megan, I will say is that the, the, the phrasing work-life balance. Yeah. Because it, it makes it seem like there's a, um, that it will eventually balance out, but it, it really doesn't. It really doesn't. Right? Like if you and I want to work our face off to get something off the ground, we're going to put a ton of time in on the work side. And the balance is, is really it's the flexibility that when we are home, we're home. So one thing that you kind of brought up that when, when you and I were talking about this topic was because you are single, you see things from a flexibility standpoint being at home in your life differently than yeah. I do. And you're right. And so one of the struggles I find with um, some of my counterparts or peers, whatever you want to call them, is that like other fathers, is that they're connected too often. So they're, they're responding to emails on Sundays and Saturdays, yep. um, in the middle of the night, you know, when they go to the restroom. Um, so they're n never really disconnecting from work. And then even at like the football field or the baseball field where they're watching their kid, their face is buried in the laptop. So they're not actually enjoying being there. Mm -hmm. They can say on a checklist, yes, I was there at my son's, but they weren't really there. Yeah. And I think that, that that's sometimes hard because I think about my life and where... I am professionally where it comes, you know, for my full-time recruiting role, you know, like I guess my like corporate role, I can turn it off, yep. you know, I, and I choose to do so, um, where, you know, come 5.30, it's off mm -hmm. and you will not, you know, and I won't pick it back up again until, you know, that next morning when I wake up at 7 a.m. And so, but I think about, you know, for those jobs where, for example, like my side hustle, it's one of those where it's like you can work it from your phone. So that's where it's that true work life balance kind of gets sticky. Mm -hmm. And I think it should be coined more as work life flexibility or understanding that work life balance it doesn't necessarily mean that one cuts off and one cuts on. Correct. Yes. Um, because of the fact, like, for example, this past weekend I was in Nashville, but we had a flash sale. Um, on the products that I sell. So I'm posting about it. Mm -hmm. But I think that it's understanding kind of what you were saying is that you can still do work, mm -hmm. but it's like there's a difference between like doing it, like like working and answering a couple of emails, but then being completely engulfed in it on the weekends. Correct. Um, and you really need to be able to take that time away. Because at the end of the day, I mean, it's kind of like you have said, 
before the analogy or like, you know, kind of what do you want on your tombstone? You know, people yeah. aren't going to remember you for being like, you know, he put in 80 hours a week. He's yeah. awesome. You <laughs> know, right. more people are going to, you know, it's your loved ones. It's the people that are involved in your life that are going to be able to carry on your legacy more so than the number of hours that you've clocked in at work. Um, so I think it's just more about work-life flexibility and not having guilt. I think that's the biggest yes. point that I want to get across about this topic is sometimes people have guilt. And I sometimes am that person. Yeah. I'm like, God, I probably shouldn't have taken off a week, you know, in the middle of us really needing to hit our recruiting numbers or whatever it may be. Yep. But, you know, <coughs> I think <coughs> if I don't die on this podcast, yep. um, I think that understanding that it's okay to take some time off yes it's not going to be that detrimental to to the work and i think if you prep it enough i think sometimes people they go on vacation a week before they're on vacation mm -hmm. so the week before it's like i didn't do anything right. I, did, I didn't prep for when i was coming back and that's something that i've learned in the year that you know the last five years of me being in corporate is i always prep mm -hmm. The week, like I work my face off the week before, prep for when I'm going to be gone, and I have things lined up for when I get back. Yeah. So that if there's not that whole lag of mm -hmm. catching up. Yeah. And, and and so you bring up a really good point is that um, it, you need to understand yourself, mm -hmm. right? And understand kind of where you work. Like, do you need to have this kind of prep time where you're putting in a ton of time ahead of time yes. before you go on vacation, and then make basically set yourself up for success when you come back mm -hmm. i think a lot of people you're right they ended up just kind of checking out sending out that last email and then when they leave and they come back it's like they're almost off for two weeks because they're quote unquote catching up to yeah and that adds more or, stress absolutely and then and, I, and there was a statistic i once read that there's it's a high percentage like like 30 percent or something leave vacation on the book so like like their vacation expires they didn't use it that year so if you were given two weeks you didn't take the full two weeks because you you didn't want to you didn't, you the team couldn't stand if you're away if that's your attitude by the way as a leader then you're garbage right like if you need to be there at the till at the store at the office you haven't you built your team you haven't built your team you, you haven't given any any trust you haven't empowered them you haven't created any kind of accountability you haven't obviously communicated it well enough to be able to make sure that it's a well-oiled machine when you walk away plus i think the other thing is that a lot it it may not be you yourself that is feeling that guilt but the peers around you guilt you for yes. taking vacation. And that's one thing I really don't like is that I've had that experience and I've seen it firsthand of you, of, you know, a boss or a colleague or a peer mm -hmm. guilting the individual about taking a vacation when that person has proven to work their face off and be such an asset, like mm -hmm. they deserve it. Right. You know, and, and, that's just to me, which I think is most important as well in any work environment is you shouldn't guilt people for taking vacations. Yes. Just because you personally, like for me personally, I never, I don't try to stack all of my vacation time in one sitting, yeah. but that's mostly because I like to see as many places as possible. Mm -hmm. I, I want to take as many vacations as I can. So I try to plan them over a weekend to where I'm only taking off maybe two days instead of five um and so but i think that that's where that kind of that guilt goes in is then you're like what you're gonna take two full weeks back to back like how dare you you know like what are we gonna do without you like how dare you decide to take time for yourself yeah or not be like us and spread out our time across you know the whole year yeah and so you know i don't think that anybody should be judged for the way that they want to plan their vacations or even take vacations. And I think there's certain things that we just can't always make our vacations surround work. Yes. And nor should it be an expectation that we have to. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll just use a, a good colleague of ours, right? She went to the Spice Girls tour, right? Yep. That's going to happen at a specific time, and you can't get around that. So no matter what you do, you have to. She had to do it. Like, like she couldn't say, like, Oh, well, I'll, I'll see if I can work around this works thing and still go there. Yeah. 
no, forget it. That's happening at a specific time. It's like it's like you know, you know sister's wedding, brother's. Yeah, you can't you know. plan. You can't be like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm not going to go to this, or I'm going to sacrifice something I really want to go to because of work. Yo, no, that's a, that's a life of regret. Yeah, yeah, it pretty much, and then, you know, it, it takes away from what you really want to do. Mm -hmm. And I, again. I sometimes catch myself doing that, mm -hmm. you know, to where I'm like, oh, God, can I really do this, though? Like, I just took a vacation in March, and I take another one in April, mm -hmm. but it shouldn't be that way, mm -hmm. you know? It, people, I think, should be able to enjoy life the way that they want, mm -hmm. but obviously understanding that, you know, you also have to put in work at work. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't just slack off there and then and then take a bunch of vacations and continue to slack off. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, 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 so you bring up a good point. I think that's probably a topic for another day is like what is effective work in the workplace, right? Mm -hmm. um, so so number one, I think kind of takeaway for me is if, if someone's going on vacation, don't guilt them. Let, yep. let them have an enjoyable time. Don't, you know... Be curious, but just for the sake of, hey, I hope you have a great time. Not like, oh, I can't believe you're taking a vacation during this time. we got this big deadline coming. Yep. i got to take the vacation, right? Yep. Deadline or not, it's got to happen. Um, and then being able to make sure that you do take the time. I, I know for me, um, so basically I'll run from for 90 days straight. So from January to, to basically April, I'll just run my face off, take, a, take three or five days off, and then come right back in. And mm -hmm. so for me, coming off of you know June vacation here last from last week, um, I don't plan on taking any vacation time until. Gosh, I think the next time we'll end up travel. I'll end up traveling won't be until like we go up to Omaha. But that's for work. So yeah. I, I like like you know what I mean. I, there'll be there'll be Labor Day weekend, <coughs> the three day weekend coming up in in, in in September. But I probably won't take off until um, for another ninety days. Yeah. I'm taking you know I'm using a personal day. To be able to, to, to disconnect and so that's kind of just I know my own energy so I can run you know four or five hours of sleep throughout the week and then mm -hmm. um, I can do that for about 90 days and then I just need to check out I need some time where the cell phone's off I'm not responding to any emails no one can really get a hold of me type of a scenario yeah yeah and so I mean how do you feel that work-life balance has changed through the different stages I guess of your life you know because you have more stages of life than I do. Yeah. Um, in terms of like, you know. That's a way to say that I'm old. <laughs> no, no. It's just, you have like different milestones, right? Like there was a point where you were, you know, like. Single guy. A single, you know, professional. Then you were, you know, a single father and, or you were married. And then you were a single father. And then, you know, you're married again. So, yep. you know, through those stages, how do you feel like you've balanced work-life balance and how it's changed? Yeah, so I, I wouldn't say it's been perfect. Um, I'm sure my ex-wife would, would agree with that. <laughs> She's <laughs> um, listening right now like, this is a lie. <laughs> <laughs> this sounds right. Um, so no, number one, when I was single and then when we didn't have any kids, there was a trade-off. So um, she understand that if I would work 10 or 12 hours in a day, then when I came home, I wanted to make sure that we had some good quality time, right? Whether that's turning off the TV, just having a nice uh, you know dinner together, or just going for a walk. Or, or watching TV or watching mm -hmm. a movie together. And so there was time that I could, you know, she, there, was, there was a purpose to the working long that there was going to be some reward, you know, so, you know, kind of chasing the, um, the, the build of, of my career as, as I started it that way. And then as it shifted, you know, when, when, I, when I started dating again um, as a single dad, it was very, you know, I had to be very communicative of like what's going on in the calendar. So um, my wife and I and, and, our, and our boys, because they're getting older now, we have, yep. we have a, a teenager and a tweener, um, and so they have, <laughs> they have different things, right, that, that pull on the schedule. And so we, uh, on Sundays, typically, we'll have like a family time where uh -huh. we look at the camp calendar and then I'll go, okay, hey, I have a networking meeting on Thursday, so I won't get home until like 8 o'clock at night. Uh, Tuesday, I have a volunteer thing, won't get home until 8 o'clock at night. And then Wednesday, oh, the boys, um, they have you know, youth group and Boy Scouts, Cub Scouts, that means they got to get, get home earlier. Yep. Um, and then, um, you know, Friday, Monday, right? So we kind of go through the weekly calendar and make sure that we're all on the same page. And then that way, my wife knows, okay, well, this is where I'm going to be and be able to make sure that, you know, boys aren't waiting at the school or at mm -hmm. some event and they're like, oh my gosh, where's my ride? Yeah. And so that, that becomes an important part of the, of the conversation. So I'd say the, the difference is when I was single is that I didn't have to communicate that to anybody. Yeah. And now I do. And so it, it almost seems, 
I don't need to tell anybody that I'm going networking. Why not just go? But you do because that, that's your significant other. That's somebody that you care about that, that is vested in wanting to see you. Yeah. Yeah. So. And so, um, I had a question and I just blanked out on it. Um, so what do y'all, what do you like to do in your, like, in your work life flexibility? Yeah. You know, on the times that you're not, you know, on at work, what are you typically doing with the family? So for us, uh, my wife and I, so we, we, we have four sons, so it's, 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 it's a lot, but it's a lot of people there, but it's a big age range. So there's a 14, 12, nine and a, almost two years old, two year old. And so the two year old gets a lot of attention just because he's two. He's two. <laughs> he's, he's, we're changing his diaper. We're not changing the 14 year old's diaper. Uh, I hope he, not. he doesn't have diaper. Um, <laughs> but then, the, then um, like on Wednesday nights, then the whole crew has to go to their events because the oldest can't drive yet. Yeah. And so there's there and, and then and then sometimes there's different things. And so um, you know, maybe there's a concert and again the whole crew has to go because my wife and I both want to be there. And so the other two, they might not want to go listen to their, their brother play violin, but guess but what they, they gotta to. do it. <laughs> and so it's just we, we help remind them that there's no need to complain, though they, they might want to, just that we're part of a family, and so that's what's gonna happen. Um, the other one is we like to play games, so we're, we're pretty competitive. So we'll play, you know, we'll play board games. We'll go for a walk. We'll go swimming. I like to be outside. It's you know we come from Wisconsin, so uh, anytime that it's over forty, we're like, dude, this is awesome. So people complain that it's so hot here. We're like that's fine. This is, it's better than negative twenty. <laughs> yeah, that's so, neat. <laughs> <laughs> so we're we're just happy for it to be blazing hot outside, and just drink a ton of water and get in the water and turn the hose on. Um, and so it's one of when this is one of my struggles. I'll be honest with you, Megan, is that. Um, turning the phone off mm -hmm. because I love engaging with people like I love human beings and so for me um, social media this is just another tool to communicate with more human beings yeah and so I just love it um, and so a lot of times I have to like turn that turn that baby off and just park it somewhere and that way I can be fully engaged and right there in the moment um, so that way I don't miss miss those miss those times yeah, and you know they actually have that feature on Instagram and even on well. I have an iPhone, you do not. But like on the iPhone, you can actually track your screen time. Mm -hmm. But even like through that, you can actually set it to where like you can't get on any social media for, you know, like once you've hit your limit, mm -hmm. then it'll it'll shut off mm -hmm. um, and you can't access anything. Yeah. And that's just kind of funny to me that that's like has to be a feature. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, we live in a digital age and I make sales through my phone. Mm -hmm. You know, and so it's just kind of crazy to me when I like take a step back and I think about where like society is going and where like life is heading. Mm -hmm. I'm like, man, like to think that we have to limit ourselves that much mm -hmm. because we're addicted. Yeah. Like I will say I wake up and the first thing I do after I turn my alarm off is probably check what's on my phone. Yeah. I just post. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, in, I'm up. I'm in post mode. Hello, 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 world, and back again. Yeah. Um, and and to, to to your point, someone had told me he's a and and he used to work as an engineer for Facebook, and he said, "Remember, there's there's entire teams devoted to get you to stay in the app." Yep. Right. So no matter how good your willpower is, it's designed to get you to stay. Right. So if you found yourself addicted to Candy Crush. That was by design, right? Oh, that was it, me. You know, no, um, <laughs> for a minute, because it, it it actually mimics like winning in like gambling. Gambling, yeah. So it was the lighting outside of like the beautiful smells and sound, um, but it had the sounds, the lighting, those um, beautiful smells of a casino. It does. They, they uh, pump in some effervescence in there. Um, effervescence of cigarette. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> and, and losers. Uh, <laughs> uh, or the or the promise of winnings. Um, and so that's, that's one thing just to be aware of, right, is that um, it's okay for us to be able to use those, those things, you know, turn it off, whatever we need to do to give ourselves that space because these, are, these things are designed to constantly be used. It's, yeah. it's, not, it's not by accident that we can spend hours yeah. on Facebook watching videos of two dudes in, you know, the middle of Southeast Asia making a hut out of bamboo leaves. I and, love and, those videos. <laughs> I love those videos, I man. love those videos. Yes. I love watching when they're like, <laughs> yes! And I'm like, God. Oh. And to think that, you know, I'm literally complaining here and people are making whole swimming pools and houses out of pebbles yeah, and clay. And, and, clay. <laughs> and I'm like, whoa. I literally watched a 30-minute video of this guy making a whole pool and he put like plants in it. 
And I was like, wow. Yeah, and I thought, I, I usually think as to myself as, that's a lot of work, man. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, what else does he have to do? Yeah, that's true. That's true. That's you know. survival. So I don't know how we got in this, well, we did veer off into now like digital world and social media. Which but but there is, but there is that there is that work life balance right because <coughs> when, when the BlackBerry came out right oh, yeah. you could finally push you know work email to your phone yep. it was called a CrackBerry because all of a sudden all these businessmen were constantly on their phones because they can now engage in business while they were traveling while they're away from their desk and so that that has just quickly um, the, the evolution was so rapid on that one because that was just in like. 2002 or 2003. Yeah, it really wasn't that long it ago. It wasn't that long ago. And so we forget that that's how quickly business has changed, that that you could be doing it all the time. Mm -hmm. And so I think there just needs to be um, a good understanding of ourselves personally of when it's on and when it's off. Mm -hmm. And not be, um, not stress out over it. Yeah. Right? Not beat yourself up over it. Uh, not think that, one, one, one thing somebody once told me is, Nobody that he's ever heard of on their deathbed says, I wish I worked more. Yeah. That's also the same philosophy I take about eating healthy. Mm -hmm. But don't listen to me because you should eat healthy. <laughs> but I'm also like, don't think that you should like cut out everything. People are just totally going to come bash me for this, but whatever. But I just always say, I don't want to be on my deathbed and be like, I'm so glad I ate all these salads. Yeah, no way. Like we're all dying. We're, we're all going to die. This is the reality. <laughs> now, you're still in the upswing of you're just living life. You're young. Yeah, that's true. But I am hitting the eight, 40. I'm, I'm at the pinnacle, right? So only I'm, I'm looking at life now. It's only going to be downhill. <laughs> I'm, I'm almost at the peak of my roller coaster ride. Is it 40 considered over the hill? No, I think it's like 45 now because we think oh. I can hold up to 90. Oh, okay. That's what you're shooting for. But I'm getting close. Okay? <laughs> I, I only have like a few more ratchets. I can start almost seeing over that ledge, Megan. This is the <laughs> roller coaster of life. We <laughs> are then, here. And all I'm going to see now is just getting closer to death. <laughs> so, yeah, I will, I will have seconds. Thank you, please. <laughs> so morbid. So fast. I love it. Um, but, yeah. I mean, but I think that that's like the difference um, in understanding how to find that balance and yep. not overstress yourself is to understand that it's okay to take breaks. It's okay to take a step back for your own self or for your family or your dog, whatever it is. Yes. Like it's okay to take a step back from work. Yeah. Somebody might get mad at you for that day, but they're, I'm pretty sure tomorrow it's not going to be that big of a deal that you took some time for yourself because you'll more than likely come back recharged and refocused mm -hmm. than you were before and you know and we had this guy come in the other day and he talked about how sometimes we're at work we're thinking of home and we're sometimes we're at home we're thinking of work yeah, that was wild that i was like true. that's so true it is true right i'm like at um, work thinking about my bed hopefully hopefully you <laughs> haven't um so you, you went to tennessee right over the weekend yep and when you got back um you had this disaster trying to get back to <laughs> back to work yeah. but hopefully from our boss hopefully he didn't bust your chops about not being able to get on here on time yeah so I, I feel overall he's pretty good at not guilting anybody on vacation. Yeah. Um, even though he himself will kind of limit himself on vacation, he, he accrues. Yeah, he does accrue. <laughs> and I'm like, is somebody not counting yours? Because whoever's not counting yours should not count mine either. <laughs> but yeah, I think that that's important. Because I think he has a pretty good work hard, play hard mentality. Yeah. And I, th 